Your cyberpunk world was better than a movie. I was in a dream and I did not want to wake up. Guys, <laughs> I feel like this, this particular book pushed me as a writer in ways that I cannot even explain. Like I have to be a little bit scared of the ambition of the idea for me to really be excited about it. So I have very few amount of words left to write for my current book, Local Heavens. It's almost done. <laughs> like it is almost done. It's crazy. There's like literally one plot point left to write. I've written the first like three chapters of this last part. Um, those are like the three main chapters, I think, to kind of tie most of the plot threads together. But also like, I think this book is one of the most truly a narrator that I probably won't write. I don't want to say ever again, but I won't be writing him that often. It, it tends to be a voice that just talks a lot in his head, not to other people. He talks a lot up here. But what I hope to make some progress on today is to probably won't finish it today, but I'm going to try to make significant progress in the third chapter of the act. So this chapter is like, oh man, I have just been dreaming about writing this chapter for months now. Like truly, uh, it's, it's crazy to think that I'm here now. I, I outline my stories like start to finish before I start writing. Um, I always know how a story is going to end before I start writing it. I think also the way that I write um, is what I'm realizing is that I tend to, not only do I tend to like want to know what how the story is gonna end before I write it, I also tend to write backwards from what I want the ending of the story to be. So I always, go into every story knowing what I want the main themes of the story to be. So for this book, it is, it's obviously, it's a cyberpunk book. It's thematically about the horrors of technology. It is about parasocial relationships. It's about um, capitalism and tech. And I kind of work backwards from the ending. So I literally had this idea for what the last, last, last scene of the book was gonna be, and I worked backwards from that. So that's how you know I'm like one of those like vibe first writers, because I'm always like, what are the vibes? And then I try to like justify what the ending vibe is gonna be. The vibes of this ending, love it. It's great. It's fun. I, I have a lot of reflections about this project. Um, I think when I feel more comfortable, you know, sharing more details about it, sharing the premise of it, you'll, you'll have a lot more context as to why this project was like, in my mind, was ambitious. So no matter what, I'm extremely thankful for this project. <laughs> I'm already eulogizing it and it's not even done. One thing that has become part of my writing routine, um, especially if I have afternoon to write and I know that I have to get into a long writing session, I always start by reading. It just kind of gets me in the mood to write. So I always try to read any kind of prose that I just really like. So right now I'm actually reading The Line of Beauty by Alan Hollinghurst. A viewer actually commented on one of my previous videos, recommended The Line of Beauty. The prose in this book is like, I feel like it really matches the kind of narrative style that I am trying to capture in Local Heavens, like incredibly, introspective it's very languid like there's a lot of um decadent rumination like really 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 good i've basically been reading it with a highlighter and i just kind of go through and highlight sort of the um descriptions and the turns of phrases that i think are just very clever and very beautiful there's just something really satisfying about the way that descriptions are crafted. Yeah, so I'm a third of the way through. Another book, I think I'm gonna read this today. I'm gonna read a couple chapters of this. So this is John Green's The Anthropocene Review. I've been meaning to read this for a long time and I was at the bookstore and I decided to pick it up. So yeah, this is a series of essays from John Green and I've always quite enjoyed John Green's writing. I read 
I've read most of his YA stuff from back in the day, but this is creative nonfiction, so it's a little bit different, but I've kind of been like in the mood for something like this, like a series of essays. And I feel like it'll be an easy but insightful read. So I think I'm going to read a little bit of this, even though it doesn't really like fit with what I'm writing right now. <laughs> All right. Um... It's many hours later. I've made some good progress with chapter 29. I am liking what I have written today and over the past few days, but I, oof, I am, <laughs> this particular scene that I'm writing is I think the most, um, the kind of like meditations on human nature. <laughs> that need to be conveyed in this chapter they are it's quite intense this kind of stuff is like some of my favorite stuff to write like it's a very um contemplative so i'm like like the vibes of it are so clear in my head translating it exactly into the right words um i'm having a little trouble like figuring out what i want to say it's, it's definitely going to be a chapter that's going to take several rounds um even within this first draft but i actually just as I was finishing up this writing session, I got some texts from Kelly saying that she had finished reading what I had sent her. Kelly was so unbelievably generous with her feedback. Um, I have not read her notes yet. I'm gonna try to finish writing, like finish this chapter that I'm currently working on, and then I'm gonna read Kelly's notes. She literally texted me saying that she loves it. Guess who has a tripod? <laughs> Can you believe how long I've been doing youtube and just literally haven't been using a tripod i know i said that i wouldn't look at kelly's feedback until i finished writing the chapter that i'm currently writing i lied i just lied she actually sent so much feedback like truly truly so much read all of her comments yesterday i was just digesting it after i had finished reading it i texted her and i was like i was almost tearing up while reading like her initial like her overall impressions i feel like she has like a genuine excitement for the story which i was not i don't want to say it wasn't what i was expecting but i think when i started writing this book like back in or i should say when i started writing this version of the book because if you have been on following these vlogs for a while you would know that this is my second attempt at writing this story um i originally attempted to write this story back in 2020 before i was doing youtube and i shelved it for a really long time and i came back to it when i started writing this version of the story um so many months ago when i tell you like i felt kind of insane for what i was for this idea <laughs> Like when I when this idea entered my head, I was like, this could either be amazing or I could utterly ruin it. It could be like the dumbest thing ever. Yeah, so I've just been really in my head. After talking to Lynn and also after having read Kelly's initial comments, I'm just, I just feel so overwhelmed, grateful that um they have a genuine excitement for this piece um because writing the ending of this book hasn't been easy not to put kelly on the spot but i just want to share some of the comments that she had made she started out with all her positive comments she has like other critiques um which i won't read out because that's spoilers but so actually one of the first things that she said was i feel like local heavens is a book written for exactly someone like me. When reading chapter four, I had to remind myself that I was reading for feedback because I was sucked into everything. The drama, the technology, the relationship between the main character and a side character. I loved your portrayal of these rich people doing drugs and chasing pleasure for the sake of it all because they're so rich. I'm not sure if I want to hate them or be them. That is the vibe of chapter four. I can't believe chapter four came out of a first draft and I'm beyond excited to read future draft. Your cyberpunk world was better than a movie. I was in a dream and I did not want to wake up. <coughs> Guys, <laughs> honestly, get yourself writer friends that just gas you up when you need it. Mm-hmm. It's true. So, um, yeah, what I did today, going through her, all of her five pages of editorial feedback made like questions for myself to ask her when we meet up next week. Split it up into questions about the tone and voice of the story, all these questions about the world building. I have so many questions about the world building. Pacing and structure, 
uh, questions about the characters. It's almost like imagine a literary fiction novel, but there's like pockets of cyberpunk in it. Um, and so the cyberpunk world has very much been bent around the characters rather than the characters being bent around the cyberpunk world, if that makes sense. Not to say that all literary novels are slow paced or anything, but I do think that the way, like if you were to think of a typical like genre fiction sci-fi book versus like a literary fiction book, they have very different tones. And I think this story tonally landing a little bit more on the literary fiction side means that it feels a lot more slower paced than what I'm used to. I feel like this project has a very specific tone and I don't want to compromise the um, voice of the character by feeling like I have to make every single one of these chapters super jam-packed with action. There is action in the book but it happens, by action I mean there is a ramp up of external conflict I would say once the second act hits. Anyways, <laughs> I'm kind of taking in some of the beta reader feedback and I'm in this position where I'm already kind of thinking ahead to revision, but I'm also like, I'm still trying to enjoy the process of just writing this book and finishing it and being in the world with these characters. I've been working through a really tough chapter and I think I hit a breakthrough. I had one of those like 2 a.m. epiphanies where I was kind of just lying in bed, like really meditating on what this chapter represents for the story. I think I was finding it really challenging. I think I was kind of overthinking it and I think I was not trusting my gut. I think I have found a good structure for this chapter. Yeah, it's not a complicated chapter, but it is very introspective. Um, and so this is like the moment where I was like, this is the scene that I was working backwards from when I was first figuring out what this story was going to look like and what it was gonna feel like. Um, so yeah, I've ironed out a lot of things. I'm really, I still have to write it, but all the dialogue is down. I've ex talked about this so much on my channel, but if you're new to my channel and you wanna know how I approach a lot of my dialogue heavy scenes. I have a video on that. So whenever I say I've written all the dialogue but I haven't written the scene yet, that's what I mean. It's because my writing style is very bizarre. I'm going to try to make progress on that chapter tonight. I actually saw that some edits for Sway With Me came back from my editor. Most of the edits were at a line level but I was adding in um, a, a few new sections here and there. She has sent over another round of feedback so I'm going to quickly take a look at that and just see if there's like any other significant changes that I need to make. So she did say that, or doesn't have that many additional edits, but I'm just gonna pop in and see if there's anything I need to address. So here's the thing about my writing style. I am always, when it comes to like nuance and subtlety, when you're like, especially when you're conveying character emotion, my biggest fear is like over conveying character emotion. <laughs> um, so the edit that she wants, she wants me to make is actually to pull back, which I, I I like getting those kinds of edits. I The edits that stress me out is like whenever I get comments from beta readers that are like, oh, I think you could like emphasize this more or this is too vague or this is confusing, needs clarity. Oh, you have to not compromise the subtlety, but it's like you're too subtle to the point where you're confusing. But the edits that I love to make are when beta readers are like, I think you already made the point. You can actually be more subtle here because I, even when I was writing this, I was like, this might be a little too melodramatic. All right, it's looking like it's pretty much in a good place. It's so I kind of love that for me. I'm gonna go through the rest of the edits um, in more depth, but overall, I think the story is like done. Like it's pretty much ready to go. It's so weird that the whole like, editorial process for this story coinciding with me finishing Local Heavens because it's kind of like I'm in two different writing stages for two different projects and it just feels really good I think to like be in that place as a writer. I am I am almost done this book. <laughs> I'm 
almost done this book. So I've been writing on and off for I would say four or five hours. Basically what happened is I I thought that I needed more scenes than I actually did. Just decided to like scrap a bunch of the scenes because as I was kind of writing this last part of the book I realized that I might be overwriting my themes and I tend to get like this. I tend to get very like unsure of like whether or not I have conveyed what needs to be conveyed but I've just decided that I need to trust myself I need to trust that the rest of the draft has done its work so I don't need to be like hammering people over the head I did get quite a bit of a confidence boost from Kelly because I was texting her she keeps talking about chapter four in particular like that's the chapter that she has highlighted as like um one that she really enjoyed which is like really nice to hear because I definitely labored over chapter four quite a bit. I think I have some vlogs where I talk about how chapter four was like the chapter where I realized I was very much self-inserting into my protagonist and um, it was also the chapter where I felt like I was really figuring, like I, I had figured out exactly like the tone and atmosphere of this story. I'm almost done. I literally probably have like 10,000 words left depending on how out of hand things get. <laughs> Okay, you guys i i literally received the most gorgeous artwork so my short story sway with me which i've talked about extensively on this channel can be published with auger soon i've just seen the artwork that is going to be paired with the story like it's i've seen the rough draft i literally almost screamed and cried real tears it's just so perfect um they did tell me that sway with me was gonna was gonna have an illustration um but i didn't really like offer any specific scriptive notes about what the illustration um has to be or anything like that what they came back with stunning like it's so perfect and i just can't wait for you guys to see it like it's really 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 beautiful Leah. Leah. Huh? What? Guess what I just did. Are you done? I wrote a book. <laughs> <laughs> Not me writing a Not book. Not even writing a book or whatever. I have finished writing this book. It was a long process i'm a little speechless i to be honest i thought that this vlog was going to be longer like i thought i would be filming all of this over the course of at least like three to four weeks but i i kind of like reached the end much faster than i i thought i was going to for this vlog um i think it's because i had one really long writing session yesterday that i wasn't anticipating on having um i've just been doing a lot of writing this week and i just didn't think that i was going to actually finish this book this quickly um i think i wrote something like 22 2500 words um yesterday and i i typically do not write more 800 to a thousand words on a good day so it was it was crazy i was i wrote a lot in a short amount of time i was kind of in a state where i had forgotten to vlog some of the process so i wasn't really talking a lot documenting you know the whole part of, of writing the conclusion of this book but i was able to get a clip of me writing like the last few sentences which i know i did that for the book i wrote last year i think it's just kind of a fun moment i feel like this this particular book pushed me as a writer in ways that I cannot even explain. I won't say that there weren't any rough patches during the drafting process because there definitely was and I have documented some of those rough patches. I think the process of writing the book very slowly and also front loading a lot of the work in terms of like the brainstorming where I just um, a brainstorm stormed um, and outlined very in depth. Um, I think it made the drafting process a lot smoother and I think this is the most polished first draft I have ever had, I've ever written. It's certainly, I think the 
the premise is quite it's it's a lot it's 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 an ambitious piece of work what this project has really taught me is that i think the most meaningful projects for me to pursue are the ones that i feel like are just a little bit out of what i feel like i'm capable of like i have to be a little bit scared of the ambition of the idea for me to really be excited about it and i think it's because i have felt myself just grow so much as a writer i was looking through the draft today and i was just shocked at what i had written like not because i was like oh my god the prose is so good i was just like all of the ideas that i was able to squeeze into this one book like it really came out exactly as i had imagined it when i was brainstorming eight months ago the story that i envisioned in my head before i had started writing this really is it 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 came out you know thirty thousand words longer than i thought it was but at, at its core i think the ideas that i wanted to explore in this world the ways that i wanted to interrogate the cyberpunk genre and the ways that i wanted to challenge these characters like i think i I accomplished what I set out to do. I feel really proud of myself. It sounds so bizarre to say that because I think as writers or anyone in the creative space, you feel compelled to always humble and to like talk down to yourself. I always try to compare myself to who I was four months ago, six months ago, a year ago, several years ago as a writer. I think that this past version of me would be shocked and so excited what I've been able to do with Local Heavens. When I went to go see R.F. Kuang, which I didn't really like vlog or anything like that, one thing that Rebecca was talking about was how she she gets bored very easily and she's always wanting to write something new. And I totally understand that feeling because I feel like I'm exactly the same way. I, I want to feel extremely challenged as a writer. Like I want to try to execute routines that feel harder and harder sometimes that can be difficult because again you end up in situations like how i was feeling about local heavens a, a few weeks ago um that i'm still worried about which is that i don't know exactly how i can take this into the queer trenches it's, it's kind of weird like it's kind of a weird project so there's all of those kinds of things and i think when you are trying to write the quote-unquote weird stuff you do get caught up in like how is this gonna find an audience you know i think i'm also going to print the manuscript because i want to be able to not like read over the draft scrivener or even in a word processor where i can like super easily edit things like i want to like be like one to one with the text i think i will also be able to catch a lot more things that way um so that those are the plans for the near future. Celebrating this win, because it's a big win. You don't need a plot to make a campfire, right? Um, no, but are you trying to cook? I'm trying to, I want to, I just want to make a fire to pass time. Oh yeah, yeah, you just need flint and wood. A lot has happened <laughs> off camera and very very head down in revision it's so weird to finish a drafting process notice in those earlier clips that I was incredibly excited and whatever it's been weeks now and it's honestly because I all of a sudden just got really creatively tired and emotionally drained. I think it was this weird thing where as soon as I finished drafting, I dove headfirst into revision. I didn't really give myself the space to unwind. I think I, I also didn't really give myself the the opportunity to fully celebrate before I immediately started poking all these holes in it and looking at it critically and I regret that a little bit because now I am doing my best to not read it. I need to to find the the opportunity to figure out what I want to do next as a writer because I think I've just 
tied so much of energy but also my sense of worth to this project in particular playing with this idea and noodling with it and you know it's it's written now but i i felt a sort of like hollowness kind of seep in, in in the weeks after finishing this draft and i don't know i just wasn't really expecting to feel that hollowness i think it's because i went from having this book occupy so much of my mental space that now that it's not the primary project for me right now i'm just like who even am i outside of this project right now which is obviously like i just need to take the time to write other stuff yeah i really overexerted myself and i just think that that's not a good thing it's taken me so long to make this vlog and to edit it precisely because i just was not in a good headspace now that the book is like with it's not just like mine anymore i feel like i've kind of popped the bubble a little bit this sort of like glittery cloud that i had put around this project it's a it's such a weird project oh my god i i know that i keep saying that but it like it really is and i think the the exact brand of weirdness of this book is what fueled me for eight months as i was writing it I'm starting to wonder if it's so weird that, that nobody's gonna want to read it. <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to end this vlog on like a negative note or anything like that. Share this like weird part of the writing journey that I don't think everyone talks about and that's like when you come out of a project that you've been working on for so long, figuring out the next thing that excites you that is like the perfect brand, the, the perfect blend of phrase so crazy only i can write this um and still like will other people want to read this that kind of intersection i have to figure out what is next for me that's okay we'll figure it out thanks for watching this video i hope all your writing projects are going well i'll see you guys in the next one i'll be the last to start and the first to leave oh i'll play the part I got a lot of